Today we're talking about flap actuation and the differences between the teams. Now this has taken some internet sleuthing to get information on because it's not something you really see often but it's incredibly interesting into some of the solutions the teamers have come up with and actually I think one of the conclusions is that probably the most sophisticated foil in the whole America's Cup potentially isn't being raced with so yeah again got Tom Partington and Rob, Gull Rob Gullen with me so let's get into it let's go into how the flaps are controlled because this is something that I must admit myself I never really even thought about it like when when these boats were announced as having flaps I just thought about a moth and that's how it would be and I didn't really think about the mechanical engineering challenge or the huge amount of pressure on the foils so where does the power come from for the for this flap control well first of all it comes from battery so everything below below the water line is battery powered but obviously a little servo down in the water to turn your flap electronics and water don't mix too well for starters but also also it's not very kind of energy dense whereas hydraulics is very energy dense kind of you know way of actuating something so it packs down a lot smaller than you know having little le electric motors there to turn flaps so most of them are using hydraulics um, electronics into hydraulics and then the hydraulics are then turning or moving some sort of mechanism which is actuating the foil surface so where do the hydraulics end and where do linkages take over is the question this this heads back to the the foil section question and the, what the bulbs are so in foils like um, Ineos and we've got they very kindly put up a video of them making their foils we can see they're taking the hydraulics all the way down into the foil arms and the closer you can get the hydraulics to the flap the better because less linkages the less slop in the system and potentially gives you kind of like a finer control and you can do more fancy stuff along the control arm whereas in boats like Emirates Team New Zealand what we see is that they they don't really have any actuation within the foil arm they're doing it all from a central central actuator which is working on both flaps either side of the symmetry line which is the contentious thing about the rules that kind of ties back into the jacuzzi foils video as well that if you're doing lots of foil control with hydraulics within an actual foil arm then you've got kind of open areas as well that can fill up with water and fill up with air and the complications surrounding surrounding that is that what you see rob yeah and i i think the other thing with this is that and this is one of the kind of dark bits of the cup that us spectators will never really know about but for every little void that you have in your foil to house any kind of control system that's effectively area that you could otherwise replace with ballast so there's quite a penalty in in your foil size by substituting lead for control system effectively so just the teams who the teams who can do this and package their control mechanism in the smaller space are going to in turn be able to have either smaller bulbs or wings or, or whatever but, but ultimately there's a drag benefit for having efficient control systems in the foil mm -hmm. but I, I think unfortunately this is one of the areas that is going to be incredibly difficult for anyone who's not involved in that team to to really know very much about unfortunately <laughs> you've almost got no idea really well, I've been doing some sleuthing, ah. so I'm going to... Um, I'm was gonna, sleuths? Yeah, so I'm just going to bring up the light, right picture on my screen to, uh, to prompt me. Let's dive into this. So I've got up on screen a, a screen capture from Ineos's inside look at their W foils being constructed and tested, and they've got this amazing test bench with a load of hydraulic rams and then a jig that they're constructing the foil within and i'm just going to remind you about about the rules so the rules say the flaps have to um, rotate a, about a fixed rotation point so 
if anyone's familiar with kind of mountain bike suspension, that's a good example of a, a double rotation point. So you can get kind of like, it, it's not just a simple radius of motion, it's got kind of like a compound curve in it. And you could do that with some complex kind of hinging and they're not, they're basically not allowed to do that. Whatever the flaps are rotating around has to be a fixed point relative to the foil arm. So initially you think, well, that makes things a lot simpler, cuts down on costs, but, um, and in your head, you just think of a simple flap on the back of a foil, which has a pivot running down the middle of it. And it just, you know, the flap pivots around the point at, at the front of the flap. Um, but what we saw quite early on in the cup were some, what could have been fences outside of the foil arm. However, you very quickly realize that they could also be pivot points for, for these flaps. And the, and, and the reason this, and the reason you might want, um, want to do this is if you have a multiple pivot point, then you create what's what you see on airplanes as like a Fowler flap where the, where the flap doesn't only kind of like go up and down, but it extends back. It increases the cord, increases basically the area. Um, and you can get like a huge difference in, in the shape. And everyone has seen a plane take off and land. will know this and will have seen it. So how do you create that sort of effect from a single, a single point of rotation? And the answer is we have to move that point of rotation outside of the foil arm. And we can see for certain that this is what Team Ineos has done on, on the picture I've got on, on screen. So they've actually got these kind of like templates and they're cut out to house the the flaps as they actuate and you can see where the curves are yeah you've got these radiuses on the back side of this template and if you draw a right line a, a, a circle which matches up this radius the center of that circle indicates the fixed pivot point and instantly you can see the fixed pivot point is well outside of the foil arm and it coincides perfectly with what people claimed were fences on the W foils. So we can reveal there that they definitely had a, a pivot point outside of it. And what that allows is as the flap goes down, it also moves backwards and increases the area and the, the cord and even kind of globally the angle of attack of the foil in that area. And the second thing we can see from this picture from Team Ineos is the outer section, the tip section. So past the kink in the W, you can see these jigs again. And here you can see actually the, the, the radius describes a pivot point, which is actually within the foil arm, very close to the top of the, of the foil. So I say foil arm, very close to the top of the foil. So they're using two kind of different pivot points, the different parts of the flap, which are both um, both having different effects. You've kind of like got this huge kind of, kind of attempt at a, at a Fowler flap in the central part of the foil, which giving you this huge kind of gross adjustment on, on lift um, and even surface area. And then at the wingtips, you've got this kind of fine flap adjustment, pivot point quite high up, limited range of movement. Um, and I think this is where this is, this goes back to, to the start again, like it, it's very much probably bringing Mercedes on board and they're like, right, we've got a really clever way of actuating these foil of controlling the shape of this, this foil. And we can do it with our kind of mechanical engineering point of view, but you will then have to go for a foil shape, which allows all this complex mechanics inside, which is an incredible incredibly interesting and daring design path to go down. Um, yeah. I mean, it, uh, well, Mercedes will obviously have experience with adjustable wing sections, flap sections, just from F1, just from things like DRS. So uh, from their point of view, I, I think it's probably not a very complicated thing. and. I agree with you. It, make, I mean, it makes perfect sense that at slow speed, when you're looking to generate lift, you just do that by effectively increasing foil area. And at high speeds, you 
go flap up and reduce foil area at the same time. Um, I personally feel like this is making a mockery of the the kind of the point in the rule. I mean, to, to say that to say that you can join two flaps that articulate around different pivot points. The fact they articulate around different pivot points clearly means they are not the same flap. To then just be able to put a flexible piece of material between them and say, no, they are the same flap is a joke, if I'm honest. <laughs> um, and I, I think, unfortunately, the, the way that people are now exploiting the flat part of the rule is is penalising the teams who've gone yeah. down a less complex flap design approach. And it's, be it's benefiting yeah. the teams who have just looked for a loophole, um, i.e. Team New Zealand with their this bit of this bit of material that joins the two flaps together is not the flaps it is th and it's not the wing either it's the control mechanism well it's an exploitation of the Good. rule if i'm honest yeah i feel quite strongly about it, <laughs> it there's but i still a, like team a, New Zealand a very solution. kind of neat solution to the problem but it is questionable as is ineos's four flaps it's fine because we've put a little bit of uh so I've been doing some sleuthing on what the other teams are doing with their flaps as well. And you might say, well, we don't see any hinges external to the foils, but you don't actually need a hinge external to the foil. You can have a virtual point of rotation, which is created by a set of linkages within, within, the, within the flap um, foil arm system. Or you, the rule is actually that the flap just has to rotate around a fixed point. So that doesn't mean you need hinges at all. The flap could just move on a track in and out as long as that track described Sliding, a constant yeah. radius. It would still, it would, that flap would be rotating around a fixed point. So there are lots of, yeah. lots of holes in that rule. You also allowed the movement of the flap yeah. to impact upon, I think, 20% of the foil section as well just by pushing up against it so again there you can see that as you retract your flap into the foil section and move the flap out the kind of like it can internally push on the rest of your foil and change a bit of the global shape and where the deepest set deepest thickness of that foil is so so that's yeah. kind of how i envisage it working you then have american magic they have a complete top surface of their foil there's no break in it um it's very highly polished and you can see there's no kind of flap line there you do see a small indentation but what that tells you like rob was just getting at is that the pivot point must be in that surface because it's like a you know it's like a, the the spine of a book basically it has to be pivoting around that that spine because they can't extend backwards because it's all one one surface so that tells us exactly where american magic's pivot point is for their flap and it's basically at the top of the foil um and we can also see that verified by there are some um they've got the central bulb and where the flap yeah, end plates are back against the foil you've got some kind of like wear marks which perfectly describe <laughs> the, really the rotation it. as well so there's that and then Finally, we go on to Luna Rossa, and here I'm not sure where their pivot point is completely. The only thing that makes me think that it's external and they are their flaps are moving back as well is that they they've got kind of like this extended trailing edge to their bulb, which comes out and it has kind of like flat surfaces where the flap is, and that goes like an inch or two further back than you imagine it might need to and has flat surfaces in it too further back so again that might suggest that Luna Rossa are using an external kind of point of rotation as well and the flaps moving back it, it actually makes it much easier to actuate the, the flap as well because suddenly you just have to like when you look at the shape of a foil it's much easier to just push something in and out of that than it is to have some kind of rotation element in there yeah i mean with the rotation points you basically you reduce the friction but you point load the hinge so and in terms of actually 
creating something which is strong enough then those all those yeah. points of ro rotation if you've got a hit are you know our focus points it's a bit it's a bit annoying that the teams are all really careful and don't just someone just isn't a bit careless and leaves the <laughs> yeah, flap in the down position when they launch thing, they sure. only see the flat position and i've been desperately looking at american magic when they capsize but obviously they capsize to leeward we need a windward capsize so that the um so the actual foil they're using ends up in the air but yeah okay thanks for watching hopefully that's um highlighted some things to you that wouldn't have really been obvious i'm sure not many people have been through the um, INEOS footage in that level of detail. Um, but some really interesting points about how these foils are actually operated and the mechanics that's kind of microed in to the foils themselves. Absolutely fascinating topic. And I think we'll come back to some of these features later on through the America's Cup. So if you enjoyed this video, subscribe. We've got loads more content coming up analyzing the team's design and sailing through the cup. So catch you around.